afternoon, everybody. And um, a regular disclaimer that, yes, I'm not an expert with the medical legal uh, scenarios here, but we have other experts around, and we'll have any corrections from them if needed. Also, regarding the professional indemnity, the myth would be that somebody thinking they don't need one. And it is actually a myth. We, every one of us needs a professional indemnity and also the establishment or an hospital needs a medical indemnity. So let's look at quickly some of the facts or what needs to be considered while buying or taking a professional indemnity. So when I first heard about it, I thought that only uh, probably the doctors are the one who need professional or medical indemnity and I was not aware as a just fresh beginner in the practice that even there are other professions like architects, lawyers and wherever they are catering to clients and where there's a chance where anything could go wrong, everyone requires a professional indemnity. So uh, we don't need to consider that it's just the doctors who are paying this amount here. So even other professions do that. And basically, we pay this amount to overcome some inadvertent situations in our life where probably we would need to compensate to a third party or some clients who are asking for a compensation, damage, or any act of omission there. And how did this word, just a quick uh, origin of this word, so indemnity comes from the Latin word indemnis. And indemnity is that we are supposed to indemnify any person for bearing his losses which have been incurred by him. So why do we need a professional indemnity? Like Saman sir mentioned in the beginning that we, this was one of the survey by National Law University in Bangalore. And this was done a couple of years ago. And they said that compared to the previous numbers, currently there is a 400% rise in cases which are associated with medical negligence. So yes, previously we used to not see this amount of number. And now the people, the relatives, or the uh, people whom we are catering, they have become so much aware of the surroundings. There is so much easy, handy information available. And plus uh, additional second opinion and other such uh, services have cropped up, which just help them or push them to kind of instigate them to go for such things. So hence, we need it to cover the, any of the legal defense costs, any of the claims for compensation or claims for injury or damage. And if there's also a breach of confidentiality, even in that case, this may be needed. And of course, if there is a negligence of an unqualified staff, which is working in our uh, nursing home or institute, the main doctor or the primary provider is responsible for that uh, unqualified staff in that case. So what is covered in our professional indemnity? So most of the times we, I'm, actually we don't go into much of detail and we just, one or some agent or we get easily lured by a phone call and we quickly say yes, we are ready to pay and just send us across the court and we make a small payment. But let's see what all things we need to pay attention and what is covered and what is not. So the legal cost incurred for defending a lawsuit is covered. Any settlement needed is also covered. And the fee payable to the court in case of a litigation, that is also covered. Uh, more details maybe we can get from Dr. Tilwani. I'm not sure if this is right. But any point you feel that uh, there are any changes or recent updates, please do correct us. And what is not covered? So if any of the negligence, omission, error has act, is out of like a criminal act or act under the influence of intoxicants or narcotics, like we saw the famous movie Kabir Singh was one of this thing which we saw in that. And um, other things like the weight reduction, bariatric, cosmetic, these are all not covered. And you might see when we fill up that form, it is always surgeons except cosmetic surgeons, plastic surgeons, and anesthesiologists because they have a separate premium, and I'll come to that part. And other things are uh, covering for HIV or non-compliance with any statutory provisions, and of course for the radioactivity. Who will be covered? So all the independent doctors who are into practice, they are covered. Their own establishment, like a clinic, hospital, a lab that needs to be uh, having their own establishment indemnity. 
and like I mentioned, the unqualified staff. So which company? So now it has become very easy because with association of medical consultants, most of us prefer to take an insurance or indemnity through them because not only they help us get an indemnity at a less cost or a less premium or maybe bulk or kind of discount, they also help us in getting a legal support, a legal aid, and they are constantly there in this bad time to help us and support us, whatever needed, which otherwise an individual would have faced just by himself. So preferably it should be a nationalized company, like an Oriental or New India. Uh, AMC does it with Oriental, so that's much more easier. And then there are endless private companies which we can get uh, online on compare the quotes or policy bazaar and blah, blah. But better is to have this and best would be to go with AMC, of course. And we'll have Dr. Vivek Dwedi who will be talking more about this associations and how they help us and he'll cover this. And second thing, which probably, like I mentioned, when we tick, we are a surgeon other than plastic or cosmetic, they always ask us for this ratio. Initially, first time, I never understood what it was and what it meant. So it basically is so, uh, so they write this short form there, AOA or AOY, and it is like it is a limit which is any accident per year or any one year. So that will be the amount referred as the limit of indemnity which will be covered over that year. So it is like one is to one, one is to two, three or four. And I think preferably we have to take one is to one is what I thought so. Uh, Dr. Vivek, is it right? I mean, one is to one is the thing recommended or? Okay, so uh, I mean, I was told we have to take for one is to one. And amount of course it varies. So it varies on the business, it varies on the hospital, it varies on the individual. And it should be somewhere what is recommended is between 50 lakhs to 5 crores. It's different for different specialities like it, I mentioned. So the premium for the specialities or the coverage is in this order. While the physician might need a premium to cover suppose for a 1 crore insurance, the premium for physician would be roughly around 8,000. For a specialist, it could be around somewhere 10, and for surgeon, it would be 12, while for cosmetic surgeon and anesthetic, it is around 20, 25,000. So that's how with each specialty, the amount and the premium changes and the amount which we need for having the compensation for. For the unemployed staff, an additional of 7.5% amount in the premium gets added plus the service tax, and that is what the final premium comes up to. And yes, the hospital premium depends on the number of beds, the o presence of OT, nursing staff, and qualified doctors, which work 24 hours. How to claim? So this will be covered in detail by Dr. Tilwani, that when do you get a summon, how do you react to it? So basically, all the legalities which we face are civil liabilities. And once the evidence of negligence or damage is established or we receive a notice, what needs to be done is first we inform the insurance company and in more detail, Dr. Tilwani will be telling us about it in the next talk. So that's all about professional indemnity. And it's a five minute thing which we need to annually renew and it's a very much important thing we need to have as professionals. Thank you. Mm -hmm.